city records manager is a post that doesn't get a lot of attention, doesn't get the glory, but it certainly is a post that deserves to be held. What we need first and foremost is someone who is reasonable. And second, we need someone who is accurate. Now we have both in exactly that order. The last thing we need in city government is accuracy getting in the way of reasonableness. Hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, sir. You'll be around all along. Oh, thank Indeed. You. <laughs> I'm in the record business, public records, legal notices, property transactions, mortgages, and the like. My office was located on the ground floor of a building perched high atop a rocky knoll, completely inaccessible to pedestrians. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning. I've left your messages on your desk. Thank you. You're welcome. Morning, Ernest. Morning, Rocky. Hey, baby. How's it going, Ernie? Well, not so good. My girlfriend's cheating on me, and my cat shredded three rolls of toilet paper all over the house. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, at least you got your health, huh? I have gingivitis. Look, uh, <clears throat> Ernie, I'm not looking for your life story here. And why did you ask? It's not a real question. Well, it's I just take these questions seriously. Talk. Okay. Vivian, what is the repair status of the vibration? Oh, the landlord has referred the problem to the general building contractor, who in turn has referred the problem to the air conditioning subcontractor, who has since gone out of business. Where do we stand now? I believe the landlord is attempting to determine exactly whom to sue. Yeah. Hey. Hey, yeah, I know I meant the call. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Thank you very much. What the hell are you complaining about? I do love you, baby. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I love her too. But it's two completely different types of love. Equally beautiful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Rocky, these just came in a half dozen fictitious business names two abandonment of use statements, and a non-responsibility notice. I need you to turn these around today. Ernie, will you come in here a moment? Ernie. This dissolution of partnership is missing a DBA. The partners are Lester and Bond. Do you recognize it? I once saw three Bond movies in a row. <laughs> Connery was it, man. Yeah, that series died when he walked. <laughs> Seven hours, what a marathon! <laughs> and the dog what, 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 was in the car the whole time, I forgot. <laughs> it crapped in the back seat. It ruined that date. The Office of City Records Manager will add a substantial volume of public records to our usual business. Therefore, I am hiring a new employee to assist us in our mission. Vivian, let's put an ad in the newspaper. All right. How about this? Rapidly expanding, vibrant public records office seeks 
dynamic, innovative, creative risk taker to interface with other hands-on self-starters, offering room for growth and promotion, excellent wages, benefits, and numerous perks. Okay, and then put the phone number down. Did you get all that? Yes. It sounds good, doesn't it? It does sound good. Where do I apply? What, too good? Well, I hate to say it, but I'm not certain that this is an accurate characterization of our office. Really? Well, we should, we should try to be accurate. Well, honestly, sir, is our company rapidly expanding or vibrant? Well, um... It does vibrate. Creative, innovative, dynamic risk-taker. Well, I think that has a nice, a nice ring to it. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but we are bound to be a disappointment to a candidate who embodies those qualities. Excellent wages, benefits, numerous perks. What might those be? All right, Vivian, you write the ad. Well, certainly, sir. I truly believe we can afford to be accurate. We have nothing to hide. Recorder. Low pay, no benefits, dull job. Vibrating workplace? It's honest and economical. It's quite snugly into four lines. You don't think we're selling ourselves a little short? Wouldn't it be better if the applicant were pleasantly surprised? Vivian, who would answer this ad? Right in here. Here, have a seat. So, I take it you saw the ad in the newspaper? Yes. What did you think of it? The ad. What did you think of the ad? Now that you've seen the office, do you feel that we accurately described it? I'm talking about the ad. Do you feel that... Oh, forget it. No, 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 sit down, sit down. I, I meant, forget about the ad. Do you have a resume? Thank you. U.S. Postal Service, clerk, dead letter office. Dead letters? Uh, undeliverables. Oh, of course. The intended recipient has died or is otherwise unlocatable, I suppose. What does the post office do with them? Uh, we scan them to see if they contain money. And if not? They're destroyed. Huh. Well, there's a cheerful business. Dead letters. Messages of hope for those who died despairing. Checks sent in charity for those who can no longer eat. Ah, humanity. You were eight years on that job. That is impressive. I appreciate that kind of loyalty. Well, this is quite a letter of recommendation, too. You know, I always wonder when a prospective employee produces such a complimentary letter like this, how anxious his former boss was to get rid of him. <laughs> <clears throat> Why did you uh, leave your former job, if, if, if you don't mind my asking? The office moved. <laughs> hmm, I see. Bartleby, what are you looking for in a new position? This one would be fine.
Vivian. Who else do we have besides this guy? No one. Nobody else called on the ad? No, I'm afraid not. It was too honest. Bartleby, what is your expected hourly rate? I would prefer not to say. <laughs> okay. If that is sufficient, Bartleby, you can start immediately. At first, Bartleby did an extraordinary quantity of work, filing a week's worth of records in just a few days. It is a legal requirement that certain notices be published, and our job includes verifying the accuracy of these notices. It is admittedly tedious work. Personal representative of the estate of the deceiving. Certain adventurous personalities need not apply. be rather inconvenient at present. Please, Vivian, sit down. What have we here? Well, it's four o'clock, and I thought you might like a nice cup of tea. Well, thank you. I've been meaning to tell you that's quite an interesting painting. Oh, thank you. That was, a. Uh gift from an old flame. I'm not sure why I still keep it hanging around. <laughs> you must have been in love with her. No, no, no. She used to work here, and one day I was supposed to be playing in a golf tournament, but it got rained out. When I returned to the office, I found her in a compromising situation. I fired her, and obviously I canceled the wedding. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no. So, what did you want to talk about, Vivian? I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy working for you and that I really enjoy my work. I'm glad. And I thought you should know about my other talents that I would gladly contribute to the business. Other talents? Yes. For instance, I make an excellent souffle. I'm well-traveled. I rode in a hot air balloon over the enchanted black forest of Germany. I went skinny dipping in the blue grotto. I'm an accomplished equestrian. I play the bassoon. Really? Well, I'm not sure how these other talents might help us here in the office. Um, certainly, you could cook a souffle for the office holiday party or play Christmas carols on the bassoon. Let me be frank. Is Bartleby being hired to replace me? No, Vivian. Bartleby is being brought on to help with the extra workload. I am very satisfied with your services, and I am certain that your myriad other talents will find an appreciative audience at the appropriate occasion. Well, I'm so pleased. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I'm afraid it doesn't open. I would prefer some air. I have thought of that. If you listen very closely, you can hear the ocean. Bartleby, come in here and verify this notice of petition to administer an estate. I'd prefer not to. Bartleby, come in here and verify this notice of petition to administer an estate. I would prefer not to. Prefer not to? What do you mean, prefer not to? Here, take it and verify the notice. Uh, I'd prefer not to. But it's part of your job. Are you refusing to do your job? Excuse me, sir. Mr. Waxman is on line one for you. Will you take it in your office? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Vivian. Uh, Rocky, uh, verify this notice of petition to administer an estate. documents have arrived. Thank you, Vivian. All right, everybody. This is a very large project. Vivian will handle the filing, and I want the rest of you to each take a box and do the verification. Ernie, Rocky, yeah. Bartleby, here you go. Bartleby. What is it? Take a box of records and verify the notices immediately. I would prefer not to. Why do you refuse? I prefer not to. But it's part of your job to verify the records. This is what you were hired to do. You will not comply with my request, a request made in the common course of business. Is that correct? You will file records but not verify the published notices for accuracy? Is that correct? Ernie, what do you think of this? Oh, uh, hey, boss, you sign the paychecks, you say dance, I rumba. Rocky, what do you think of it? I kick his ass out of the office. Vivian, what do you think of this? I think he's a little loony. Well, Bartleby, you've heard what your co-workers have to say. Now take this box and do your job. Everybody, get back to work. to handle this situation carefully. I was now in the political arena. My judgment in personnel matters might very well be exposed to public scrutiny. If I could coax him into an angry response, I'd feel more justified in firing him. Bartleby, when all of those records are filed, I want you to stop by the bank and replenish our petty cash. Vivian will call ahead and make the arrangements. You just give them the check, and they will ask for your fingerprint. I'd prefer not to. Oh, please, you don't mean to keep up with this nonsense, do you? W what is your problem, then? 
What, what you think you're better than us? You think that you, you're, uh, you're uh, a special uh, elite? <laughs> what, have you got an excuse from work? Or, or you got a, some kind of a deferment? You got a 4F? Ernie. You got a, you got a, uh, you got flat feet? Ernie, calm you down. Got, uh, you got a, a heart murmur? You got the peanut butter in the behind thing or something? Ernie, Ernie. No, come on. What are you all? Well, maybe you're a conscientious objector. Well, if you are, then I would advise you to flee to Canada. <laughs> Man, well, you got a chance. All right, Ernie, Ernie relax. Relax. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Rocky, thank you. Thank you. I just think Bart needs a little talking to, that's all. Mm -hmm. I think the situation can easily be corrected. Rocky, Rocky, no, Rocky, no, there's no need for that. I appreciate your concern, but please return to work. All right. No problem. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> Bartleby. Go to the deli at the shopping center, get me a corned beef sandwich on pumpernickel. Hold the tomatoes, but have them put a few pepperoncini on the side, and get me some chips and a berry soda. Not cranberry, though, some other kind of berry. And here, get something for yourself, too. I would prefer not to. You will not? I prefer not. We have a city vehicle assigned to us. It's parked in space number 18. Here, you can take the car. Don't drive. You don't drive? Well, then how did you get here? Did you walk? There are no sidewalks. Vivian, can you take a bus here? Uh, yes. From my house, I would take the 36 to the terminal in town, then transfer there to the 80 and get off at the shopping center, then catch the 48. There's only one at 7, 10 a.m. The ride's roughly an hour and a half from the mall, so to get here by 9, I have to leave the house by 4.45. My car was in the shop last week, so I looked into the bus schedule, but obviously I took a taxi. Thank you, Vivian. Is that what you do? You take the bus? Very good, Bartleby. not to. I would prefer not to say. I would prefer not to. I would prefer not to. I'd prefer not to. I would prefer not to. Just a moment, please. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning. Here are your messages. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Ernie. How are you? Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little frustrated. My insurance company has raised my rates. They do this every time I try to make a claim. I was, I was sitting at a red light, and I hear a gunshot. I, th I think it's a carjacking, so I hit the gas, I ran the car in front of me, and they're claiming it's my fault. Well, was it a gunshot? No, it's fireworks. Oh, but it sounded like a gunshot. No, it sounded like fireworks. But th that's what they always say, shooting victims. They say it sounds like fireworks. I was just driving defensively. Good morning, Rocky. Jesus, is it possible to get any privacy around here? <clears throat> Painful partnership dissolution. The city manager will be here in 15 minutes. We're wrapping up. As time went on, I became reconciled to Bartleby. His calm demeanor made him a valuable acquisition. He was honest, and he was always there. I developed a certain confidence in him. Bartleby. 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 Your finger. Put your finger there. 
Put your, put, put your, put your finger right over there. Put it over there. Jim, just put your finger. Put your finger there. Oh. I prefer not to. Bartleby, what? Oh. I tell you your mother called yesterday? Yes, Vivian. You left me a voice message, a note, and you wrote it in my day planner. Oh. I just wanted to double check. I couldn't remember if I wrote it down. But it must have been about 3.37 in the afternoon. Hey, uh, Vivian. What the hell are these? Chocolate nipples. They're all the rage in Britain. I was feeling nostalgic last night, so I picked up a copy of Her Majesty magazine, and there was this recipe. Luckily, Sweet Bodies was open late, so I was able to insert the ornaments before they got hard. That's good to know. Thanks. What's these? What do they look like? Chalk nipples. That's right. Still so hot out? Quite hot, yeah. Have you heard the forecast? No, I haven't. Well, it's supposed to be wet and sticky, steamy and sultry, clammy and close, dank, damp, and. Oh, yeah. Moist. All today? Mm hmm. Yesterday evening was miserable. You know, I'm very sensitive to heat. I got home, took off all of my clothes, and then I... vacuumed the apartment. to see you. Hello. <laughs> Vivian, have you met Mr. Waxman, our city manager? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I, uh, I have something uh, for you. What? Uh, I've got a, a little something to show you. What? I've got, I've got something to show you.
Naturally, you can understand I can't accept the gift. Absolutely. You'll have to excuse me, but I'm new to civic duty, and the impropriety never occurred to me. It's okay. Uh, what is he doing? Uh, uh, have you uh, met Ernie? No, I don't think I have. Ernie, this is, uh, this is Mr. Waxman. This is Ernie. Hello, Ernie. Hello. And, of, uh, of course, you've met uh, Vivian, our office manager. Yes, I most certainly have. Well, we'll be, uh, we'll be seeing you. One evening, rather late, I was entertaining a young lady whom I had recently met at an industry watering hole and who I thought showed considerable interest and potential for the public records business. Well, here we are. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> public records? Yeah, yeah. Music for the people. Music <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so what bands do you guys record? Huh? Oh, uh, right. What bands? Uh, well, let's see. There's uh, the Back Beach Boys. Green Bay, Marilyn Hansen, <laughs> the Red Hot Pepperoncini. And this is uh, my office. This is the hub <laughs> where you know, I make all the deals and everything. There's the phone. I got a line for heavy metal. Uh, this line is for the rappers. Get me the rappers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how it works. Whoa, 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 that, no, that's gotcha, that's 20 years old. Oh, it's older than me. What? <laughs> so, are you gonna come see us play Saturday night? Um, actually, I have another engagement. But I could cancel. <sighs> well, let's... <laughs> Bartleby, what are you doing here? Will you please leave? I prefer... Get out of here! Wait here. I'll take care of this. Is he gone? Who is he? Rock musician.
Good morning, Vivian. How's that vibration coming? I have determined whom to sue. Excellent work. Bartleby, about last night, that uh, young woman that I was uh, interviewing will not be offered a position here, so there's no need for any awkwardness about the incident. Bartleby, I'd like to speak with you. Bartleby, tell me, where are you from? I prefer not to say. Do you have any family in the area? I prefer not to say. But what reasonable objection can you have? I am trying to help you. But I must ask you, as your employer, to comply with the rules of this office. First, you cannot live here. That is not acceptable. Second, tell me you will help verify the records tomorrow, or even go down to the post office. In other words, just be a little reasonable. At present, I'd prefer not to be a little reasonable. I prefer to break his neck, the little bastard. I'll give him preferences. What's he prefer not to do now? Rocky, I prefer that you return to work at the moment. Lately, I had fallen into the involuntary habit of using the word prefer on all sorts of not exactly suitable occasions. Boss? Oh, I was thinking last night about Bart here, and uh, it occurred to me that it's possible that he has attention deficit syndrome. So if he would prefer to get a good buzz every once in a while, I mean, strictly medicinal, of course. You're using the word, too. What word? I would prefer to be left alone. That, that's the word, Ernie. Oh, prefer. Strange word. Uh, I don't use it myself. Anyhow, what I was saying was that if Bart would prefer Ernie, to... Ernie, please, just get back to work. Oh, sure, if you would prefer that I would. Excuse me, sir. Would you prefer to take a call from the landlord? We're all using it now. I beg your pardon? That word, prefer. Bartleby, what are you doing? You've been standing there all day. Why aren't you filing? I have decided not to do any more filing. No more filing? Why? Can't you see the reason for yourself? Bartleby, if you're sick, lie down. When you're feeling better, get back to work. I've given up working. I see. You realize this will have an adverse effect on your salary? Bartleby, the time has come. I have indulged you long enough, far beyond what any other employer would tolerate. Your service here, or rather your presence here, is no longer needed. Friday will be your last day. I encourage you to make other arrangements as quickly as possible. If you need any assistance, please let me know. Fortuitously, Friday has finally come forth. Any engagements for the weekend, Rocky? Oh, I got a hot date tonight. Really? With whom? How do I know? Until I get to the club and check out who's hot. Ah. Might be a sparkly woman with body glitter and baby blue eyeshadow, or, uh, I don't know, a vampress lying motionless 
on scarlet velvet, surrounded by flaming torches. Mm. I see. Gee, I'm just picturing the fireworks as Rocky finds his soulmate for a lifelong relationship. Relationship? Give me a break. You are an animal, man. That's right, I'm a male animal. I am not in denial about my roots. Yeah, well, why don't you join the human race and evolve? We're walking on our hind legs now. I'm the Darwinist here, pal. A sexual yeah. Darwinist. Oh, Survival of the fittest. Right. While you are busy caring and listening to a bunch of therapy addicts, I am out there scoring. Let me tell you something, Ernie, my friend. Get out of here, man. It's the sensitive guy that gets the needy woman. Yeah, it's the worm that gets the hooker. Bartleby, it is time. You must leave now. I'm giving you an extra month's pay. Here it is. Here, take the money. I'd prefer not to. Very well, I will leave it here. Now, after you've cleaned out your desk, be sure you lock the door behind you since everyone's left for the weekend and slip the key underneath the mat so that I can find it on Monday morning. Well, Bartleby, I shall not see you again, so goodbye. If I can be of any help to you, please contact me by email or by regular mail if you don't have internet access at your new location. Goodbye, Bartleby. And good luck. She'd like a jelly donut, please. Oh, the gentleman got the last one. Okay, I'll have, uh, yeah, two of those. Do you have any chocolate? Look, there's one with nuts. There's one with sprinkles. Maple bars. Oh, oh, honey, hi, honey, no. Morning, Ernie. How are you? Come on. N not too good, actually. Uh, I, I just spoke to my daughter on the phone. She told me that she's quitting school and she's moving to Vegas to live with her boyfriend who plays Ringo in a casino production of Beatlemania. All right. My cat. <clears throat> Let's try that one again, huh? Ernie, how you doing? Hey, if, if you don't care, why do you ask? It's not a question, it's a damn greeting. Just say fine for once. Ernie, how's it going? Fine, that's all you gotta oh, say. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Perpetuate society's artificial, bourgeois, mannered consciousness. Just sweep all the non-conforming pain under the rug. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Nice to see you. Have a nice day. Yeah, right. Ernie, don't you think we all have the same damn problems in our lives, huh? But there's a time to talk about your problems, and there's a time to just say, fine. You got a daughter running off to Vegas? I'm stuck in a dead-end job that's boring as hell and getting paid freaking peanuts. Yeah, I got that problem, too. The following Monday morning, I made it a point to arrive early at the office.
Not yet. I am occupied. Not gone. Not gone. have been dismissed, discharged, fired, and terminated. You've been given the ax, laid off, let go, sacked, canned, booted, and kicked out. You've been downsized, you've been asked to resign, you've been retired early. Now, have I made myself clear? Is there anything at all that you don't understand? Now, will you, or will you not leave these premises? I prefer not to leave these premises. But right do you possibly have to stay here do you pay taxes do you pay rent do you do you do you, do you own the property you haven't even touched the check that i left for you are you ready to work now will you file records will you go to the bank Will you do anything at all to justify your presence in this office? Oh, hello, Mr. Waxman. How nice to see you again. So nice to see you, too, Vivienne. I was just in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop by these files. Just in the neighborhood? Hmm. I didn't realize we were in a neighborhood. It's really more of a cornice or craggy perch. A plateau, perhaps. A mesa, maybe. A precipice is plausible, but a neighborhood? I think you're being overly charitable. In any event, thank you, Mr. Waxman, for the files. Vivienne, you have such a refreshing command of the English language. Well, how exceedingly kind of you to notice, Mr. Waxman. Please, call me Frank. Oh, I will. Oh. Your name befits you, candid. Forthright. Plain spoken. Waxman, you old codger, what brings you to this neck of the woods? Public records, of course. Oh, well, you've come to the right place. I can rest assured they're in good hands. Yes. Well, uh, say hello to the mayor for me. Have a nice day, Mr. Waxman. I mean, Frank. Thank you, Vivian. Hey, Waxman, how you doing? Good to see you. Hello. Hey, we got our own Waxman. Hey, Waxman. Madame Tussauds on line one for you. Your spot at the museum is ready. Actually, actually, there are two spots available. There's one between Julius Caesar and Don Knotts, and the other's between Genghis Khan and Ed McMahon. I think we should melt our wax, man. 
What do you say, Bart, huh? What do you say, wax man? You still prefer not to? That's enough. Rocky, there'll be none of that. Sorry, oh. boss. Just having some fun. <clears throat> Bartleby, he would prefer not to leave, cause he's the wax man. He's the wax man. Will you make coffees? I'd prefer not to. Will you make coffee? I'd prefer not to. Will you make some calls? I'd prefer not to. Will you work at all? I'd prefer not to. Waxman! Waxman! I don't appreciate being laughed at behind my back. Hello, Frank. We weren't laughing at you. You weren't, were you? No, your name was the inspiration, but we were laughing at Bartleby. You see, he's like a wax man. <laughs> like a wax statue. Yeah, sort of like a, like in a Ripley's Believe It or Not to the Wax, wax Museum. They, they were just having a little office fun, <laughs> a, a morale booster. Why is he standing there like that? Why shouldn't he? He's getting paid by the hour. Why aren't you working, young man? Um, it's uh, attention deficit syndrome. Uh, it, it's, it's very unfortunate. We're exploring disability options. You're telling me this young man is sick? And you're singing songs and teasing him? Well, um... I wish I was that sick. It's pure genius. Answer me. Why aren't you working? Prefer not to. Oh. Oh. Yes, give me the mail. Now. He must go. I must get rid of him. But how? Have him arrested? On what charges? Vagrancy? He refuses to budge. He is not a vagrant. Well, there's a cheerful business, dead letters. I always wonder when a prospective employee produces such a complimentary letter like this, how anxious his former boss was to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you leave your former job, if you don't mind my asking? The office moved. The office moved. <sighs> the office moved! Huh. No windows. Oh. You don't want windows. You don't, it, it's a maintenance issue. They, they get all dirty, and then you have to clean them, and better off with a wall. Uh-huh. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, you'll touch up this spot, I, I assume. Uh, that, that one? Yeah, this, this one. Oh, the, yes, now that, yes, we have a team, actually. It's a great team. They, they didn't have a chance to come in since the, the last tenants kind of scooted out. Mm -hmm. But once my team is on that, the spot will be uh, gone. Now, you'll change out that bulb. Oh, yeah. I will. A bulb man. What's that smell? Is that mold? Uh, no. Yeah, cubby fish. Yeah, come on, cubby fish. No, no, dance a little bit. Why don't we watch this? Oh, no, no, come on. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I have an announcement to make. I think I found the problem.
Unbelievable. Mm. I could finally come to work without getting physically sick from that damn tremor. This little guy must have been stuck up inside there forever. He has no head. Oh. All right, so what, what's the announcement, boss? Huh? Oh, we're moving. We're moving to new offices. That's rather inconvenient. Yeah, good timing. You know, what's the matter with this office? Wait till you see the new place. It's in a business park. Business park? Those two words should never be together. Business park. <laughs> they have a word for people who say things like that. Oxymorons. Bartleby, I have decided to relocate my business to new offices. We will be moving next week. I'm telling you this now so that you may seek a new position. I've written you a letter of recommendation to assist you in that endeavor. I tried to emphasize your strengths. Frank, how are you? on the street six blocks away. I'm in a two-hour zone, so we're going to have to feed the meter. <sighs> well, they said it was first come, first served. They didn't say you'd have to get here the night before. <sighs> so, how is our new office? It smells of mold. They said they would take care of that. My clothes, my hair, it's rather inconvenient. Uh, and what's this? There appears to be precipitation permeating the premises. Huh. They said they would take care of that. Hey, boss, check out this giant wet spot here in the wall. Hello. What on that one? Look, it's damp to the touch. Come, feel it. Feel it. See? Huh. Vivian, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. See? Hence the mold. Yeah, hence. They said they would take care of that. Vivian, report all these problems right away. Come on, guys, there's work to do. Take those boxes and get started. Vivian. I would prefer not to. <laughs> it's just a joke. You can't even take a joke anymore. <laughs> and then, well, excuse me. I'm looking for the former tenant of 001, the Thorny Knoll complex. Well. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, uh, you left someone behind in your old office space. I don't know what you're talking about. A strange man? He says he works for you. Well, I used to employ a strange man, but uh, I dismissed him quite some time ago. He won't leave. <sighs> well, I'm very sorry, but this man that you speak of is nothing to me. He's not a relation of mine, and I am not responsible for his behavior. Sorry to have bothered you. Take him away. 
We don't want him. You take him away. What's going on here, Mr. Z? These are my tenants. They can't take anymore. Take what? Bartleby. He stays in the hallway. He stays in the lobby. He's sleeping there. This is not my problem. I have no connection to Bartleby. He worked for me, and I fired him. You brought him there. You get rid of him. I'm going to call my attorney and sue you. Okay, okay, okay. I will go talk to Bartleby, but I'm not promising anything. This is not my problem anymore. Bartleby, what are you doing here? Are you aware that you are causing a great deal of trouble for me by persisting in occupying this lobby? Now, one of two things must take place, Bartleby. Either you must do something, or something must be done to you. What kind of work would you like to do? Would you like to find a position with another public records company? No. I prefer not to make any change. Maybe you'd like to work for a collection agency. No. That doesn't suit me. But I'm not particular. I know. How about work on a ship? Breathe some fresh sea air. Completely change your outlook. A ship? is too confining. I'd not like that. Too confining? You confined yourself to my office for months. There isn't anything definite about work on a ship. I prefer to be stationary. Fine, how about a job as a museum guard? They're quite stationary. You could stare at paintings instead of the air conditioning vent. I prefer the vent. How about a career in pest control. I can recall my high school guidance counselor recommending that line of work to many underachievers. I prefer to not work in pest control. Telemarketing. No. Quality control? No. Directory assistance. No. Beekeeper. No. Circus clown. No. Bartleby, look, I have contacts. If you had to, what career would you choose? I don't have to. Over there, please. Hotel voucher. Good for a night at the Ritz. Compliments to the mayor. Messages? Well, I don't believe there are any. What? No messages? It's surprising how the volume of activity has diminished since we lost the city account. Oh, there was one message from the police department. The police? Yes. Apparently, Bartleby was arrested and removed from our old offices. Well, where did they take him? According to police procedure, he was booked, fingerprinted, searched, and after a night in jail, he was released with the other vagrants to the soup kitchen beside the railroad tracks. Excuse me, 
I'm looking for an odd, skinny guy wearing a suit who might have been delivered here. Ah, uh, wouldn't we all like to be delivered? There's a symposium in progress under the overpass. You may want to check there. Just follow the tracks. Thank you. Oh, would you by chance have an extra dollar and 13 cents? I was photocopying my dissertation. Oh, much obliged. to say to you. Bartleby, I tried to prevent this. I'm not responsible for bringing you here. Bartleby, you can't stay here. This is no place to live, out in the open, under the freeway. I know where I am. Bartleby, Bartleby, listen to me. Why don't you come with me to my home where it's warm? At least until we can make some other arrangements. Please. At this moment, I prefer not to make any change. Excuse me, uh, a friend of mine is standing uh, under the freeway and, he, and he's hungry and he needs to eat, but he won't come inside. Could you bring him a little something to eat at mealtimes? Why can't he come in and get it? It's free. Well, I think he's a little deranged. We don't deliver. Okay, you know what? Well, let me give you a little something here. Okay. You can't bribe a charity. It's redundant. You want to make a donation? Go talk to the lady up front. All right, you know what? <clears throat> Yeah, just give me some food then, okay? That I can do. But you see this long line? Everyone here has first class tickets, just like you. It's simply an alien conspiracy. You don't believe me? Read the National Enquirer. Best investigative journalism going on today. Shut up. You know where Elvis is? He's not dead. He hasn't left the building. He's with the Pope. Well, you shut That's where up. the UFOs land, you know? It started in Pangaea, Lemuria, when all the continents were one continent. Shut up. They came down in spaceships. And if you're a madman, well, you got to justify it with some real loyalty, you know? Shut Aliens up. recognize this. Bartleby. 
Bartleby. Dead letter. Ah, oh, Bartleby. Our humanity. successful business career, you figure it's time to relax a little and uh, write your memoirs. Well, the world doesn't need another book. My feeling is that the marketing department is going to have a great deal of difficulty with this material, particularly the ending. It's dreary. No, no, it isn't. Don't you see? Bartleby lives because I'm telling his story. The life of Bartleby will not become just another dead letter. In any event, I have another appointment. I don't understand. Well, what about Bartleby's story? I am going to pass on it. You can't pass on it. Bartleby's story must be told. Well, it won't be told by us. What do you... You got a... You got a shelf full of books here that you just put there to make a buck. You can't put one story about humanity on that shelf? I think we need to work on our ability to handle rejection. Don't you get it? This isn't about rejecting a manuscript. This is about life and death. I think you should leave now. I would prefer not to. Fine. You just stay where you are. I'm going to leave. I would prefer not to. I would prefer not to. 